and welcome to another episode of Cultivate. I'm your host, Jennifer Murray, and today we have Raman Azar from Planetary Remote Sensing. Um, this is amazing technology, and I honestly have never thought of this, but after getting to know him and understanding what he does with this technology, it's fascinating. So I'll have him tell you a little bit about himself and the technology, but he's a remote sensing scientist who uses his knowledge and decade of experience to find cutting edge solutions for the good people, for the good of people and natural environment. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be on your show. And I hope I can explain and open some doors about this technology and get more people to know what is happening actually in the world with the cutting edge uh, stuff that's coming in. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about uh, a little bit about your background and how you got to here. Sure. I got into remote sensing because I was amazed with uh, stars. Uh, we used to do stargazing as a kid. I think human being has always been amazed uh, looking at the stars and even our gods, they live in the skies. And uh, that's what we have always been looking to see what is beyond. At certain point in my life, uh, I thought, how would it feel to see from that perspective? to see the earth from the skies and it grew in me and uh, the interest was, the thirst was a lot. And I started studying uh, how I can get into this field and I found remote sensing, which is actually the science of studying targets, surfaces, to objects from a remote uh, place or from a remote manner or way. So remote sensing is actually studying Earth from a distance. That could be with drones. If your kid is playing with a drone and is watching you, is doing remote sensing in a very basic way. Mm -hmm. Or aerial airplanes, as we call them, or satellites. Uh, it's all remote sensing. And yeah, that's how I got into it. That is very interesting, a very cool story. So much happens when we are younger that affects, you know, what we do later on in life. And it's very nice that you could turn your dream into a career, right? Yes, yes, yes. So how does, that, yes. how does one study to become a remote sensing scientist? Uh, well, it, it is a field. It is actually a separate field that uh, you can start studying it, but it's a little bit confusing because in different countries, this field is under different uh, departments, let's say. Okay. For some countries, it's under geodesy or geomatics. Some countries, it's geoscience. Some countries, it's surveying. Some countries, it's civil engineering. Oh, wow. So depending where you live and what that country is uh, using remote sensing mainly for or conventionally for, okay. the field has uh, formed under that department. And uh, for me, I've been moving around, around the world a lot. Uh, I've been changing countries for the last 15 years, studying here and there. And uh, so I've always been moving from one department to another, one department to another. I've been under civil, I've been under geomatics, I've been under environment. So there's not a fixed answer for it. You gotta see where you are and you gotta find out how you can study it. And how different are those from country to country? Oh, completely different. Completely, completely different. Completely different, yeah. The focus is different. Uh, for example, uh, back in Malaysia, I was studying for my master's and the, the main focus over there is on uh, rice, um, rice, okay. Yes, rice and palm trees, because there's a lot of palm oil production over there. And they use remote sensing over there for this uh, mainly two reasons. And that's maybe 15 years ago. I'm sure it has developed. But yeah, 
or back in Italy, uh, when I was studying my PhD, the focus was uh, uh, on crop monitoring. Uh, I was working with um, uh, National Research Center of Italy uh, while studying and after it as a researcher. And we were focused on natural hazards, um, wildfires, floodings, okay. and also crop monitoring for the whole European continent as the part of National Research Center. So real time, right? So you're looking from the satellite and you're seeing exactly where the fire is so they can mitigate the fire easily than having to try to find, you know, exactly where it is or how does that work? Uh, yes, yes, it is uh, kind of real time. It depends on your application. Okay. If you're in defense or intelligence, it is definitely real time. Okay. But when you get into commercial as, uh, let's say, uh, what we do in agriculture or civil or surveying, you get as close as 24 hours. That's how close you could get, yeah. Okay. And so how do you get this technology? I mean, you don't own the satellite, do you? So how do you get that? How are you able to use that technology? Uh, there are lots of ways. Uh, well, actually, remote sensing, uh, there are some satellite data that they're free. Oh. Yes, okay. yes. And really? they're provided by governments or in case of uh, North America, uh, USGS and NASA, they provide the data for free. Whatever is free, you can get it from there. In case of uh, Europe, there is the European Space Agency, ESA. They provide the satellite data free, but there are also commercial satellite data. The higher uh, the resolution you go, the data is more, most likely commercial. And there are different data providers. There are different data providers uh, through the world. In, uh, can't count them. There, there are a lot. We got a lot. And you can, there are different sensors, different types, and then you can search and find what kind of data uh, you need. What, one, of, one of my job today is that I, I help people find and choose the best data for their application. That's one of my uh, duties now, right now. So when you say they provide it for free, but that doesn't give you like a report of anything you'd want, would it? No, so what, like, what would you get for free? Uh, you get the raw data and you have to know how to use it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. I can make an example. It's like uh, you go to a grocery and you get some flour, some oil, and you got to bake a cake. You have to know how to bake the cake, right? Got it. It's the same thing. Okay. That's a great analogy. Thank you. <laughs> So then what, what is this um, sensing? How do you uh, talk about it in Canada and in US? Obviously I'm in the US, you're in Canada. So let's talk about some applications that it's used in those two countries. Yeah, remote sensing has been used. Uh, well, uh, United States was the first country that started it. Uh, remote sensing started uh, back in 60s. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a photo of the first uh, televised photo of Earth in 1960 through one of the NASA satellites. And uh, well, nowadays uh, there are very very high resolution satellite photos available, such as this one, for example, which is 30 centimeters and it's over Brazil, over a soccer stadium. And you can see the details, how detailed they are. And we, are, we, we will be getting 15 centimeters. So imagine you have this wide range. In the United States, this has been uh, used historically like for decades now, right? So it's wide, widely used in agriculture. It's for environment, definitely, for climate change, um, for uh, defense, of course, the, they were developed for defense and then they came to yeah, other uh, kinds of applications. For civil, for surveying, for wow. infrastructure, in, any, in everything. You use it in everything. And you can get down to a person? How close can you get down? 
for now with satellites we have up to 30 centimeters so that means that uh, maybe this is 30 centimeters yeah so if that I is a square i can see it. wow so 30 I can, centimeters so that yeah this is 30 centimeters yeah what should be square right should be a tile okay that's really scared i mean that's really scary that they can't now and they don't um they meaning people that use these satellites so you don't have to get people's permission oh you're not seeing the faces so you're not invading any privacy right okay you okay. are seeing whatever uh airplane is uh let's say flying over anything you, you're seeing whatever you're seeing and go oh, i give you a very good example okay google earth or Google Maps, when you turn on the satellite mode, that is between 50 and 30 centimeters over popular, let's say, locations. That's right. And when exactly. you zoom in and then you get that 3D kind of uh, right. view, that is aerial photos. Got it. I didn't even think of Google Earth. Clearly, I don't use it very often. <laughs> so, wow, that's exciting. So, of course, agriculture. Yes. So, which um, examples of that could be hemp or cannabis. So, what kind of, um, what would a, let's say, a hemp farmer, why would they engage you on your services? Okay, um, that's a very good question. But let me just go a little bit back okay. to tell you how it works so yes. that could convey the meaning. Right. Remote sensing is about electromagnetic spectrum. I'm gonna show you a photo, an image of electromagnetic spectrum. And uh, this is what our world is about. The reason why we see what we see is that we can just see in that visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. It okay. starts from gamma ray and ends in radio waves. And uh, that's why we see the leaves green. That's why we see the sky blue. Because we can only see in that specific range. Okay. Imagine a snake. Snake has a different range. Snake has thermal sensors. And this is how a snake sees a mice. Well, the mice cannot hide in the dark might think so but actually not wow. the good thing about human being is that we have developed the technology and the sensors to be able to see beyond what our, our eyes can see and that is what remote sensing is about let's put it like this we study universe in gamma rays okay if you look at this image i'm just helping you and navigating you through the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. We study the universe in gamma rays. We check our broken bones with x-ray. We study the ozone layer in UV range. Okay. Infrared helps us to see at night. Radars function in microwave range and radio waves are used in telecommunication. Back in school, I used to have this professor that he used to tell me, Everything in universe is about electromagnetic spectrum. We can solve all humankind problems when we can utilize the electromagnetic spectrum in full. Example of his word, that was a quote, the example of his words is MRI and CAT scan. Yeah. It's remote sensing. It's electromagnetic spectrum. It can see inside you. And that's the same basic thing we work on. Uh, for agriculture, that all the crops, wine, grapes, hemp, cannabis, everything, it's the same thing, right? It's crop, it's agriculture. How it works is that the sunlight shines on crops, on leaves, on plants, and some parts of this electromagnetic spectrum is absorbed by the leaves or the fruits, or the branches or the soil okay. and the rest of it is reflected the satellites they record this reflected uh, radiation okay. 
and we grab these uh, recordings and we process it and then we can define what is happening. Wow. And that's how remote sensing works. So instead of having to walk around your entire farm, which a lot of these farms are gigantic, you can actually look down and assess what's going on in your crop. What are some of the things that it looks at? Okay. What, what kind of data? Sure. Uh, a good example of what she said is just like a hemp farm. You know, sometimes they grow so big they have put put a net or mesh to hold them, right? Uh -huh. You can't walk in them. And if you have a big farm, how can you see it? So there are different ways to see it. You can use drones, you can use satellite data or aerial data. But what we look at, what we look at, this image that you're seeing uh, is how different crops would look like. Okay. Remember I talked about visible range. The visible range of human being stops at 700 nanometer. But after 700, 700 is a magical number. After it, the magic happens. That's where we cannot see, and that's where the sensors step in. In this image, you can see different types of crops. We got beans, we got alfalfa, we got wheat, grass, potatoes, everything, right? And you can obviously see here how different they would look to us when we're looking at the process and the curves of the reflections. And that's how we can different, differentiate between different types of crops. But that's not all of it. What about if our hemp or cannabis or grapes or potatoes are healthy or not, right? right. The following image. Yeah, this is how a sugar beet, as I picked up as an example, with that funny picture beside it, this is how a healthy sugar beet and a stressed sugar beet would look to us. So can you see, it, see this with your naked eye? Nope, can't see it, but we can see it. And that's where we step in and, when, and then we can know what, uh, stress level or health condition is happening in that specific, let's say, hemp plant or uh, cannabis plant. So if it needs water or if it needs nutrients or stuff like that, that could assess it. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. I don't have the numbers on top of my mind now, but if you're growing potatoes or watermelons, Oh, you need to water them a lot. Yeah. And your soil has to be constantly moisturized, right? One of the things we do is uh, checking soil moisture with this okay. guy. I'm going to give you another example. This is an example of grapes. Grapes, okay. Yes. I like Merlot. I also cook with Merlot. What we can do is that we can differentiate the grape types with satellite data. Wow. This image shows you. We can see what plants are cabernet, what plants are mellow, what plants are syrup. And we can say, for example, in hemp, for example, what kind of hemp your neighbor or what kind of cannabis your neighbor is growing. That could help you to find out what's coming in the market or in the region, right. Right. same thing for wine, same thing for right. crops, it's basic agriculture, right? Got it. So is there any way for a, a farm to make it so you couldn't see? No, because you can see through whatever it is, right? Yeah, if it goes indoors, our hands are tight. Oh, okay, yes. indoors, but yeah. any crops outside? Any crops outside, we could see, but I mean our hands in terms of satellite data, but if uh, for indoors we have uh, stationary sensors, so we actually have to go there and put the sensor and uh, because it is covered, right? Yes. Right, right, exactly, yeah. Um, so how close, let's say you're looking at a hemp farm. So with the information, are you able to identify the exact plant 
that you need to go out and assess? Let's say it's not getting enough water. Technically, it depends what kind of accuracy we're targeting. What okay. do we want to see? Okay. Some farmers, they are interested in, the, in a general view over the whole field. Okay. Some farmers are interested in uh, individual plants. Some farmers are interested uh, in more detail, even in terms of uh, cluster of leaves or branches, right? Okay. And depending on what a farmer or a grower needs, we have to go to different platforms. Right, okay. Yes. Uh, if, if, uh, if someone is growing uh, hemp or wine and uh, they want to check a cluster of uh, grapes or cluster of uh, cannabis uh, flowers, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to use satellite data. That's where the drones, they step in. We, okay. we, will, have, we will have flyovers. Uh, but um, same thing also for, uh, uh, for soil moisture is important. It's not only a, a, about the plants because uh, uh, for farmers, it is important pre-plantation to know the situation of the, uh, of oh. the soil, right? Right. You can track the soil moisture. I have a video. If you can show it, I'll show you. We did a, we did a soil moisture mapping, uh, and we did a wo crop water content mapping. With this is with satellite data over over a field. That's a canola crop. Uh, it shows us the change and the stress within the plants. So besides checking the soil moisture and providing a plantation uh, grid mm -hmm. for hemp, for cannabis, for grapes. These, these are the plants that are really important how you plant them because of the, you want the enough space between, between these plants, right? Right. Uh, you need enough to get enough sunlight and we can design those with satellite data. We can check the topography. We can, uh, the, the, the slope of the land. We can check everything with satellite data. And one of the most important things is the water content, which uh, reflects into stress for the health of the plant. Right. We can check that. Right. So if your hemp is uh, drying out, it will show. So what specific things can you do for hemp? Good question. A great question. Well, we work in agriculture. Hemp is a plant. We deliver services to every kind of plants and everything, but hemp is a plant, the end. So what we can do for hemp business in your industry is that we can check the missing plants, check canopy uh, volume, canopy volume, check um, crop health, we can check crop stress, we can check crop water content, uh, we can build models for a yield estimation. This is, really? yes, especially for hemp. Build models for yield. Yes, we can build models for yield. It is amazing how the overall production of uh, volume for hemp per square feet is higher than any other kind of plants that you can imagine. Like literally everything is used when you're growing hemp. You, you make papers out of it, you make uh, ropes out of it, clothes out of it. It's used in... Uh, uh, plastic in different uh, uh, artificial, let's say, substances. It's used in the International Space Station. It's used in... So you know. actually miss something because I guess if I was planning a hemp farm, I would want to know how the soil is where I'm going to plant my hemp farm. So we would probably start with that, right? Yes. Well, uh, from far away, we can tell you, we can help you with the moisture. Mm -hmm. But when we step in and we get some samples, uh, we can check the conditions of the soil and check the nutrition. Okay. So a good example would be that we could see what parts of your field needs fertilizer, what parts doesn't. So you don't have to use fertilizer all over the field. That's a cost-effective decision, right? Right, absolutely. Or nutrition uh, or disinfectant. We can check the patches that they're stressed. 
For irrigation, some farmers, they use uh, pipelines. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do have this problem with vineyards here. The coyotes come and chew up the, the pipelines. And the pipeline breaks and uh, downstream, the, the trees, they don't get enough water. And then the soil goes dry. Right. Uh, so drainage, we could check what parts of the hemp farm is uh, dry or is under stress, so they can check the irrigation. Uh, same thing for soil, for example, sometimes it happens parts of your field has a sandy kind of uh, soil mm -hmm. that doesn't absorb water, instead it just passes over down. So you need to work a little bit on that part of the soil. We can, we can flag this out mm -hmm. if, with the continuous studying. And yes, as yield estimation, we can build models for yield estimation. Actually, we did this uh, for rice back when I was working in Italy for European Union. Uh, we did a, a rice estimation with 86% of accuracy in mid-July. You have to know that the rice is cultivated in September and the yields come out as numbers in October. Wow. So that's a couple of months ahead that help the authorities to regulate the prices for import and export of rice and keep the prices balanced in the whole European continent. And governments take advantage of this. It could apply the same thing for a hemp farmer. They could uh, build a model, we could build a model for them and they could now how much they're gonna um, cultivate, how, 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 much, uh, how many tons of uh, product they're gonna have, right? By the end of the cultivating season, yes. So what about security? There is a lot going to happen in remote sensing. For now, we are getting up to one time per day satellite revisit. So if you have a farm, I can get a once a day, if the weather helps, once a day satellite image over your data. But this is going to change. This is going to change in the next couple of years. Okay. And we will have up to 15 times of revisit per day. But you did and say they couldn't see your face. You can't see your face, but if you're having someone, if you're not in... In your field, if you are managing a lot, many, many numbers of fields, or your field is too, too big and you can't have security all over the place, if someone enters and is stealing your uh, pile of uh, harvest, imagine with 15 times of 15 times per day revisit, yeah. the mach machinery will be visible, or or you're subcontracting someone, right, to right. come and you're sitting in Vancouver your wine yard is in Napa, California, and you have subcontracted someone for your hemp farm or for wine yard to come and do the cultivation. And right. due to COVID, you're not there. You can't be there. Right. And you can visit every couple of hours, revisit. That means wow. 15 times during the daylight. And uh, you, we can track if the people are working on that security, right? If, if, right. if your contractors are working, if they're not. Yeah, that's, that comes in handy right now. So you think that's going to be out in the next couple of years? It will be out, yes. Okay. Wow, this is fascinating. Um, I can't even imagine, uh, you know, what other, what other things um, that can be, that this technology can be used for. Um, well, is there anything else that we've missed that you oh, can yes. talk about? Yes, yes. I want to show you... Uh, I want to show you two images. Okay. Uh, one image is from a company named Precision Hawk that they do okay. a great job. Actually, I had the honor to meet uh, uh, one of the uh, directors in uh, last year, two years ago. In a, there was the Remote Sensing Association meeting. Uh, okay. I was presenting over there and the gentleman was over there. Precision Hawk is based in Texas and uh, they do great job in agriculture with drones. Uh, I want to show you an image they did for a hemp farm. This is with drone. This is not with satellite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in this image, you can see uh, individual hemp trees. You can see the missing mm -hmm. uh, trees. And uh, 
this helps the farmers to know the geometry of their plants, what is located, where, and what's happening in different patches. Wow. The next image I want to show you is with satellite data. This is over, uh, the credit goes to Harrison, uh, Joe Spatial. They're a leading software. Uh, that we use also their software for our processing as well. Uh, this is a satellite image over a hemp farm. It's a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, not medium, high resolution. Can't be as much as drones, but this is uh, 10 right. meters resolution. And this farm, wow. you can see the red patches. Right. The plants are under extensive stress. And the green parts, they're healthy hemp plants. So this, this, is, this gives the farmer uh, what is going on on their farm. And we can produce this for any kind of agriculture product. Right. So which include cannabis as well. So, you know, cannabis yes. uh, grows are getting larger and larger and larger. So, yeah. God, this would definitely come in handy. Can you talk to me about what's the price range? I mean, I'm sure it's very large, but what is, what is something start at for a general? We have to know what the farmer needs because like the last image I showed you, it's with satellite data, definitely the cost would be less, but if there's a need of drone, like the first image, then we will have to have our drones flying and there is a uh, lots of uh, other expenses in, involved, right? Right. But we, for small to medium projects, we usually work with a square per kilometer and square per <laughs> square foot in this case. Yeah. Yes. And uh, for uh, larger projects, we usually work with uh, project-based prices. So I can't give a price. We, we will sit, we will uh, see what you need. We will do our estimates. We will... Uh, find the best prices and we will help you to choose the cheapest method and then we can give a uh, we can give a estimation of how much it can cost sure well and of course right this is replacing costs this isn't really an i mean it may be an added cost at first but you're saving your crop um, it's definitely a, a very important thing. Um, I, I mean, if I had a large operation, I would definitely want to be doing this. So, and I really appreciate you taking the time. This is very exciting and I can't wait to see the progression of this. And if you are interested in remote sensing, you can reach out to us at cultivate at cannabistech.com and we will get all of those funneled to him. Um, but thank you so much again for, for coming and I wish you all the luck. At the end of the day, you should not look up to the God to help you, but you can look down and help yourself with help of satellite data. Love that. I love that. Thank you so much and um, yeah, have a fabulous day. Okay. Thank you.